Most edited videos incorporate music, and iTunes is one of the most common apps used to organize that music before you bring it into Final Cut Pro 10. So in today's Mac OS tip, we're going to talk about iTunes and how it integrates with Final Cut. The first little feature I want to point out is how you import music into iTunes. And not the whole process of it, because that's pretty straightforward, but when you import music, the default is to use a format that's more compressed. And you can check this. If you so go back to your library, select a song, and then go up to the File menu, there's an option here to convert that song. And right now we see an option to create an AAC version. And this is a more compressed version. So when you import music, if you want to keep a higher quality format in, instead of using this compressed format, just go into the iTunes Preferences, under the General tab, click Import Settings. And here we can see what iTunes is using as the encoder for importing music. In this case, it's using the AAC encoder, but I usually like to use the AIFF encoder. I find the files that are created from this are much, much larger, but in most cases, Final Cut handles these files in a better way. And you can see this, if you import an MP3 file, for example, into Final Cut, it's going to be automatically converted to an MOV file. So Final Cut can handle those formats, but it, it really doesn't like it. And those compressed formats can cause issues and slow things down. So if you have the space, I usually recommend using the AIFF encoder. And that's all you have to do. You can keep the settings uh, automatic, and then we'll click OK and OK on this file. So now, if I have this song selected, I'm going to hit Command-I on the keyboard to get information of it. So you can see the file here. This is an MP3 file, so it's an MPEG audio file. So I do want to uh, convert this. So with the song selected here, I'm going to go up to File, go down to Convert. And now notice, because we changed that preference, it says Create AIFF Version. So we'll click on Create AIFF Version. iTunes converts the song, and usually this is a pretty fast uh, process. And now we have two versions of this song. If I go to this version here, I uh, go to the file, now we can see it's an AIF version of that song. So the last thing I want to show here in iTunes before we switch back to Final Cut is these two songs are identical. I just called them song, but if they were uh, a specific song with the album artwork and everything else, they would look identical. And that can make it a little difficult in Final Cut to determine which one is the correct format. So what I usually do is I'll also create a new playlist for those songs. So we can go up to File, New Playlist. And I'm just going to call it Final Cut. So now I've gotten information about the second one. So I know this is the AIFF version. So I'm going to just drag that over to the Final Cut playlist. And that's pretty much it. And that's all I have to do here. So now I'm going to switch over to Final Cut. So here we are in Final Cut. At the top left, you have your... Uh, music and photo browser. So you can just top left of the browser, hit the second tab, that'll go to it. Here we see iTunes. Uh, if you have Logic and GarageBand, you'll also see those apps, but just hit on iTunes. And now we see our, our library here. Uh, we can drag across the song to select a portion of it, just like editing a clip. We can click and drag if we just want the opening of the song or the ending here, maybe after dips down a little bit, we can go to the end. So that's how you can select a song, then you would just drag it down into your project here. So here's what I mean here. We see the two songs. We don't know which one is the AIFF version. Uh, so we're not really sure which one is the higher quality. So at the top right, it says iTunes here. Just click on this little menu and notice now we have our Final Cut playlist that was created. So I can click on Final Cut. Now I have just the one version of that song. I can drag this down and I know that's the AIFF version because I put that into the playlist within iTunes. So we drag that song. Uh, here it is and that's perfect. So that's how you can organize music inside of iTunes using a playlist and then add that content here inside of Final Cut. So I'm going to make just a few edits here to make this a very short project so we're not waiting around for it to share. But now I'm going to show going back to iTunes. So to get something back into iTunes, just go up to the Share menu, and you can choose any format for the most part here that you want to share the project as. So if you want a higher quality version, you can select that, or you can maybe choose one of the smaller, more compressed, and more compatible with Apple devices 
uh, options here. But in my case, I'm just going to say master file, and I'm going to click on the settings tab. Uh, um, this is all straightforward. You can look at those settings. It's the normal share. But what I want to show here is at the bottom, it says open with right now it's set to QuickTime. So in almost any one of these share options, you can change this to one of the add to iTunes options. So we can actually add this right to the uh, iTunes library by selecting this. And now notice it says it's going to add it to the playlist called library. We're just adding it right over there. So uh, that's pretty much all we have to do. Then we'll click share. And it's happening in the background. You can click on the background tasks window at the top left here to monitor that as it's sharing it over to iTunes. If it's the first time you're sharing it, which it is in this case, it wants access to be able to do this. So I'm going to give it access and hit OK. And the share is complete there. So if we switch back over to iTunes, we'll go for our, I believe it'll be to put it in the movies here. Usually it puts it under the home movies uh, playlist. And there we can see that movie has been shared over to iTunes. And that's how you kind of round trip. You can start out with music in iTunes, edit it in Final Cut into a project, then share it over to iTunes. And then the last tip I want to share here around iTunes is just managing this content. Because I create a lot of content that is not something I would consider home movies. I usually consider it a project that is either a movie or it is a TV show that I'm working together as far as our content. So once the movie is shared over here in iTunes, to better organize this media, just click on the video, press Command I to get information about that item. And then we have uh, all the details here. So you have the name of the project, you can put in direct uh, genre, all of that stuff. But the important one I want to throw out here is under the um, options. Because this is where you'll see media kind. And this determines where it's going to be put with inside of iTunes. So right now it's home movies. If I don't want it to be a home movie, maybe I want it to be an actual movie, I could select that and it'll sort it into that point. Um, TV show is a little bit more detailed. If we select TV show and go back to details, you'll see it also gives you an option for season and episode number. So if this is a reoccurring show, this might be the first season and it's episode one. We could put that in there. I could add a release date, all of the other content here. But then once you hit OK, notice the movie moves out of the movie section. If I go over to TV shows, now I can see the show. I didn't name it, so it's unknown show. But there's season one, episode one of that show. So that's a little, couple little tips there about uh, iTunes and kind of going back and forth between iTunes and Final Cut and then back again. There are many articles on Apple's support site around working with audio formats and working with iTunes. So if you want more information, definitely check out those. You can also send me an email, finalcutprohelp at me.com. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you want something specific, include it in the email you send over or leave a comment below.